<sighs> hey there, Angie M here. Just wanted to do a little get ready with me. I know everything just looks, I felt like I looked so good. Well, not so good, but I felt like I looked, you know, good-ish until I turned on the camera, like in the mirror upstairs. I was like, oh, I'm having a good hair day. My hair wants to curl as it gets longer. So that's, that is what you were seeing. It is sweatshirt day for me. Ah, uh, yeah, no, bunch of stuff, like total communication issues. My thought was to talk about this idea of polite communication and I'm just going to just start grabbing stuff because I need to get into and out of this really quick. My daughter has her gymnastics tonight. So I just want to do something really simple. I don't know, I'm kind of been burning out on makeup and I feel like what it is is every time I just want something just simple, just throw something easy on. I'm like, five billion colors and glitter. So that is a thing. I've just got my eye primer here. And part of the reason I wanted to talk about polite communication is I just feel like I've had experiences of late, both personally and professionally, where it's like, I don't know what it is, but it's almost like this keyboard warrior mentality from social media is trickling into just daily lives and how we communicate with each other. And it's really annoying because I feel like it's just, it's counterproductive. And then I sit down and I realize that we are, like we are over communicating as well. We have so many different modes of communication, whether it's, you know, face-to-face, -face, on the phone, via text message, are you Skyping, are you FaceTiming, are you IMing, are you... Are you emailing? Are you DMing? Are you doing something else? And I just, I have seen an uptick of multiple modes of communication being used for, for simple things, for like one thing or, or answering a question and just bombarding people. And I feel like that is a very negative move to me. I, I don't agree with the mentality that someone else's urgency is my emergency. And I think that the ease of communication is making things worse where we're waiting to communicate things until it's absolutely necessary or the very last minute. And then we're surprised by the response we get from people. And I'm guilty, I'm guilty of this too when I need something. And that's why I say it's just, it's, it's something to talk about. I just, we gotta start communicating a little bit better with each other. So I've got the Artist Couture supreme nudes collection i'm just gonna go with the mats i'm gonna stay out of the shimmers as i said i have things to do today and i just i just want something simple so i primed my eyes i've got my sonia kashuk brushes my it cosmetic brush for aligning i'm just doing a quick dust off here <sighs> i had all these bold things i wanted to say and i decided not to pull my notes out because i felt like I was going to go into a very dangerous territory where I was going to get super angry and amped up and back into the headspace I was in when I made the notes. And it's actually funny because right before I came down to film this, I have issues with my phone when I'm working from home from time to time. And I'm just going to take this exposed shade right here, this lovely beigey shade where all of a sudden... I was getting like a like a telemarketing call and then I saw that an hour and a half ago my husband had texted me something. I never got an audible notification. I have actually looked at my phone to clear out an email in that time and didn't have anything. All of a sudden it dropped in and it was something that was important and it was like I, I didn't get it. So, but then I feel bad because then he's sitting there like, did she get it and not, you know, not message me back did something happen is, you know is something going on blah 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 you know what I mean like it just it becomes that kind of world but I also feel like the urgency with which we send a lot of our stuff and say a lot of our stuff also creates this other problem where when everything becomes urgent and we're calling and emailing and IMing and using every mode of communication that we have to to communicate with one another for lack of saying it better we dilute the real situations that do need immediate contact and discussion because we get caught in this sort of minutia type place. And I'm looking and I've used, I think I've used every shade in here at least once. So that's, that's a good deal. But uh, I'm going to go this slightly warmer transcend here. 
I just feel like we're we're talking, 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 but no one's really communicating, listening, or hearing, which is a problem. I'm just using the same brush. This is the Sonia Kashuk brush, wide eyeshadow. I have found that I really like these brushes. My eyes are hooded. They work very well because I have to, as much as I go into the crease, I have to kind of create a new one, so to speak. I feel like I've been pulled in so many different directions. And I also feel like what we do, when we bombard people also with multiple modes of communication, we tend to overload. And if you're overloading because you can't get through voicemails, emails, phone calls, you're getting spam calls, like it's lunchtime. I get a ton of spam calls on my personal phone for some reason at lunchtime and for some reason later at night. Let me tell you, a huge pet peeve with the at night stuff. But I just, again, why, why do we do this? Like, and again, I'm guilty of it. Like I see myself too. Like if I call and leave a message, I need to wait for a response, not call every five minutes, call, hang up, call, hang up, call, hang up, because you don't know what's going on with that person you're, you're reaching out to. They might actually be dealing with a legit emergency while you're trying to do something. At the same time, I also feel like we get into this place where people don't respond to things either. And when you need a response and no one's responding and you're following up, following up, following up, following up, following up, you know, it has just this tendency to get really crazy. I feel like this transcend shade is so much more pigmented than I thought, even in real life. I mean, it looks just very rich, very pigmented, and I appreciate that. I do not think... I don't think being an a-hole is the way to go. And my takeaway on communication is if it's important, communicate it clearly. Like if it's something that needs to be done and it needs to be done right now to avoid something else, like you've, you've got to deal with it. You can't just, you can't just not, you can't just bury it in an email. And something to be cautious of, you know, I know obviously text messages are a little bit different, but I feel like we use instant messages quite the same way we use text messages in our world. And I think there's a real need to be cautious with that because text messages and IMs generally don't get the same kind of reception or notification or saving something much like a, a voicemail or an email gets. I think what I'm going to do to tame this down is we're just gonna go into stripped here. So I went into transcend, which is beautiful. I'm just gonna go into this stripped color with my Sonia Kashuk blender. This is a blending crease brush. I really like this brush. And I'm just gonna go right along and just get it into the crease. Really just kind of buffing and blending everywhere. Really kind of highlight the little, little, little bit. Something I saw that was interesting that I really liked, speaking of communication, was actually from, from Hindash. He's showing off his palette and as he was doing it, he was showing, you know, highlighting more of the lid. And the, the woman he was working on had, I noticed, had slightly hooded eyes. And it seemed to actually go very well. I am interested in his palette, but I'm not a makeup artist. And I'm not as familiar with color theory outside of knowing what I like to my own eye. And I kind of want to see, I want to see more everyday user type people talking about it and using it to see if they use it. I'm afraid I would buy it and not use it. That it would be the kind of thing that I would just go, ah, it's too much work. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it. Do I need something deep? See, I like, I like just deepening out here. But again, I'm trying to stay simple. I know, right? I'm not, I'm kind of liking this. I also like this palette. I like this stuff blends. I feel like it just... It's way more kapow than I was intending. Um, pigmentation, like I would give a 10 out of 10 with the with this palette. I actually like the mattes more than I like more than I like the the shimmeries because the mattes are just they are they are awesome. They are fabulous. There's something about this I'm not liking. I don't know if it's because of how peachy it is. You know what? I am going to take this in a slightly different direction. I can't decide between Silhouette 
and eccentric. I like eccentric a little bit more than silhouette. I like a mustardy shade. I'm just going to tap into that really lightly. I'm just gonna come right, right out here. Let me see if I can give just something. My brows also really need to be plucked, but I felt like I was over plucking them a little bit. So I am not going to pluck them right now because I just don't think that's the thing to do. And I'm not intending this to be packed with color. I just want to see if I can change the tone just, just a touch. In real life, I feel like I have more variation in the color, like it looks different than it does on the camera and it could just be the soft box and that I've got a lot of light. I don't mind it and I'm wearing glasses, so that that is a-okay. I do want to line under my eye. I'm just gonna grab a different brush quickly for that. So just making sure we're communicating with each other. It's a fabulous thing, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say about it other than just don't be a dick. Like, don't be a dick. And another component to it, and I wanna tread lightly here, you know, kinda like tr trigger warning on this, like trigger warning, I am gonna take Silhouette for under my eye. I do feel like there is a lot of gaslighting that goes on. I feel like I had an experience recently where I called out somebody's behavior towards me and as soon as I called it out, I, I knew what was going to happen. I have been around the block a couple more than a couple of times here with how people are, and I know human nature. And, you know, I did what I needed to do. Like, it, it wasn't a thing I was even worried about because, like I said, I knew where it was going. But I felt like as soon as I called out the behavior, which was really unacceptable behavior, that all of a sudden it was put back on me like I had done something really awful or I had been really nasty. And I was just like, that kind of gaslighting is not okay. I see it for what it is and I will defend myself when it happens. But I've had a number of experiences now, particularly recently, where it's shocking sometimes where it comes from and how it's done. And I think we just have to remember, you. Whatever you're going through, whatever your day looks like, you can't treat somebody like crap, right? Let's let's call it what it is. You can't treat someone like garbage and then expect that it's not going to be a thing. I hope that was my cat I just heard. So, that's the... Yeah, like I said, I'm trying to try not to bring myself back into a headspace that I was in recently in a, with a situation because I get very angry and it's not, I always hate to when people do this to me, like, oh, they're, they're defensive because they're angry. No, I'm angry because I was put in a position where I was treated like garbage and then had to defend myself because I got treated like garbage. And that is not cool. Like, you know, it's funny, as catty as we women can be with each other, and I know women get a bad rap. Oh, women are awful to each other. Women are the worst. We're really not. Like, I've had some things directed at me of late by men that I'm just like, yeah, no. Th things we're not going to do, as Emily D. Baker would say. And I just kind of think it's funny now. Like, I, whenever I have a situation where someone's just way out of line, I, I've stopped calling out certain behaviors because if I call it out and they're like, WTF, then I, then I get the gaslight thing where somebody's then trying to cover like, oh, now I'm going to have to deal with this. And, you know, I just, I had it happen and I was really, where I was really calm, I was really calm about it. But then like people are like, oh, you know, like, like thinking I was super upset. No, I wasn't. I just like, I am to a point where I am used to this, where I know that there are people who are going to behave a certain way. And it's up to me to decide whether or not I'm going to accept that behavior or punt that behavior away. And again, we're just, we're in this world where cancel culture is such a thing too. And I think it has trickled into every area of my life where people are so worried that they're going to say or do something or get accused of something 
that's going to really turn into something else and just being super mindful that sometimes people react in a certain way because they're already thinking, oh my God, this is now going to spiral into, and I'm gonna be accused of sexism, ageism, all kinds of other different isms. And I, I don't rule that way. Like my first, my first thought when somebody says or does something that I'm like wonky, like if it's a dude, my first thought is never, oh, he's just doing this because I'm a woman. I usually think, oh, they're doing it because they think I'm a moron. <laughs> that literally, like, it doesn't matter. Personal, professional, it's all the same. That is, that is kind of what I run into where it's like, oh, they just think I'm dumb. And sometimes that works to my advantage and sometimes I let it roll and sometimes I do pretend to be dumb because when people think you're dumb, they have a tendency to keep talking. So if you're in a situation where that is to your benefit, just let them think you're dumb. I, again, I try not to get overly defensive about stuff. If something is really bad I and I call it out, you know, it, it is what it is. But the more the more defensive I find other people getting, and I've just got my Too Faced primer, it, it just, it defeats the purpose for me. Like, I feel so defeated about one of these recent issues, and every time it comes up, I just get so angry because of what the other person tried to do. And because it went from hey, this was a really crappy interaction to, hey, this person's now trying to gaslight me and turn this around and justify their behavior by saying I was behaving in some way inappropriate. And that's not cool. Like if you are going to engage in that kind of, I should call it assery, well, then I'm going to deal with that as well. And that I'm not going to be as calm and polite about as I would be with just, hey, someone's almost had a bad day, right? And particularly in your professional world, you have to you have to skirt that a little differently, right? You got to be a little bit gentler about it because you don't know what's going on on the other side, and you don't necessarily want to, you know, come out of the box looking like the a hole that they're trying to paint you into a corner as being, right? I'm just dusting off my blush brush. So what I find works for me, I've got my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter in two. is usually I let people dig themselves into their own holes. If it's a pattern of behavior, and we all know this, we all have these people in our lives who just do things over and over and over again, and you're like, when will it end? I just wanna give a little bit of something here. Like, they'll paint themselves into the corner. You don't need to do it for them. You don't need to be the big bad wolf going, oh, they treated me like X, Y, Z. No, just let, just let it go because the interactions are going to keep happening and you don't need to defend yourself from that. Like you don't need to make yourself into the bad guy or someone's boogeyman. And I think that's hard for me because I do have, personally, I kind of have this retribution style feeling towards a lot of things where once somebody has done me dirty, I kind of feel like I want to return the favor. And as, a, as an adult and as a professional, that doesn't always go over so well, right? We're not in high school anymore. I'm just going to take the NARS Laguna. I said I didn't really want to blush. I'm going to be wearing a mask later. And I'm just going to... I've got my hourglass number two blush brush in it. I also didn't want... I, I don't know. I also wanted something matte, but I didn't really want my other blushes. So I just I was like, you know what? I got a little bit of color yesterday outside. I'm just going to use my bronzer. And just kind of give a little healthy glow. You can see my freckles. You see, that's not that's not age damage. Those are freckles. Those are freckles. They come out when I get color. My freckles on my arms are also really coming out. My freckles come out before I actually look like I have color. My three-year-old already looks like she's got a farmer's tan. And we are not in a sunny, warm place. My husband, too. They color so... Their melanin is much better than mine because my melanin's like, nope, I'm going to sleep. See you later. Bye-bye. I can get a nice golden tan, though, if I work at it. But I don't work at it because I'm almost 40 and I have had sun damage, like, removed from my nose. And I don't, I don't want sun damage. Sun damage bad. So I wear very high SPFs to avoid sun damage, and I need to... Get that on the list because we do definitely need sunblock my, for my daughter and I. My husband refuses to wear it. I don't know why I'm like, do you want skin cancer? No one wants skin cancer. Hashtag trigger warning again right there. No one no one wants to deal with that. And I know it's weird that I'm using a, a bronzer 
for a blush, but that is the mood I am in today. I'm actually really liking how this is looking. I was wearing uh, I was wearing Charlotte Tilbury's Tell Laura matte today earlier. I'm gonna wear something different right now. Just, just gonna keep buffing and blending. I really, I really like Nars Laguna. I know I didn't prime my forehead, but we'll just take a little bit of that. I really, really like it. I am, I was gonna try it years and years ago. I know it's such a, it's such a fan favorite for people, but I didn't, and I just, I, I love it. Like, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, so last but not least, I'm going to use an Artist Couture lip gloss. This is in Shameless. It's kind of a mauve color. I like it. because my lips are stained, it's not a true color. So don't mind, don't mind that, but these I like because it feels really good and it feels nice. And I am getting contact dermatitis from stuff I ate over the weekend. My skin, skin around my mouth in particular has gotten so overly sensitive to things. But I mean, that is it. This is, this is just a light look. I like it. I don't think there's anything about it that makes me go, oh, that's awful. It's not experimental or anything. It does look a lot. It looks, the eyes look a lot more than I think I was intending for, just a light wash of color. I totally have to do a video showing you makeup that I was inspired by as a kid. And you will be like, that's a no makeup makeup look. And I'll be like, yes. And for some reason I can't seem to achieve it because anytime I get anywhere near my makeup, I'm like, I want it all. <laughs> Which is not a bad thing, but when you're going for something lighter, a little bit. But I'll see in the in the real world. Maybe I'll try to check in with this one. Uh, oh, I also learned that my eyes aren't my eyes are semi hooded, but deep set as well. Like that line is way like way back in there. But I in a in a hooded eyelids group, I have learned that hooded eyes. Like true hooded eyes are a little different than mine, but you can have hooding and deep set eyes. I would, I just wish I had more lid space. That, that's all. That's, that's where I like that the deep back cut. I have to make. I always have to make myself almost like a new crease. So I always bring color up higher. It's a thing. I know my eyes. I was doing that before I was watching tutorials with people saying this is what you do for this type of eye. The one thing that I do definitely have a problem with and have to consciously try to get better at and haven't is the fact that I do drag my lower, I do drag this part down instead of out. It, I should be dragging it out and not down because when I drag it down, it drags the eye down and doesn't, it changes my eye shape away from my natural eye shape. So that's something that we're going to be trying to do. But again, that's why I want to start doing these chatty get ready with me's where I'm in my studio and I'm filming and I'm talking to you because I just want to be able to so again, talk talk about topics. I know, look at all those grays. My hair was my hair was golden brown. Like I almost feel like what was golden and what was lighter is actually what's going gray first. I'm I'm okay with it. I'm gonna go gray gracefully. I have started following a lot of groups for grays. Speaking of communication, right? If all we see are these 20-year-olds who look fabulous and we're not looking at ladies who are our own age or who are doing things gracefully themselves and being like, look, you can age and you don't have to pretend to be 20. You can do things that work for your skin. You can use products that work for your skin. You can let your hair go without having to worry about dyeing it. I used to be blonde. There is, we're gonna talk about it in another video. There is a blonde that I would love to go back to if I could, but it's not something I can maintain feasibly with what is currently going on with the gray situation. And I kind of want to go gray gracefully because I don't, think dyeing my hair and pretending that my hair hasn't been graying now for like 10 years already is going to suit me very well. There's, there's a genetic component with that for me. My mom's hair started graying really early. Gray is a thing in my family. I would rather take the graying than the thinning that also runs in my family. 
So I, I will be grateful for the grays because on the flip side of that, I could also be thinning. My hair only looks tamped down because of my headset. My hair is also fine, but I have a lot of it. But what is also happening is the grays are a different texture than the rest of my hair. They are also thicker than the rest of my hair. So my hair also feels much thicker than it has in years past, which is a good thing because I've always wanted thicker hair because fine hair, even though there's a lot of it, presents its own issues with styling. But I mean, you're, you're seeing this is, there's, there's nothing. This is shampoo, condition, air dry. There's nothing else in my hair. My hair waves and wants to curl and do goofy weird things. It's funny, my daughter has a section in the back of, just in the very back underneath of her hair that wants to curl and the rest of it is straight. Whereas mine, all of it wants to curl and wave and do goofy weird things and look strange. But when it gets longer, it gets heavy and that disappears because of the heaviness. So huh, it's a thing. Communication overload, it's kind of where I am at right now. I am also hyper aware that my teeth look yellow. It. I have caps on my most prominent front two top teeth and there is nothing I can do about it. I have a filling on a tooth over here. There's nothing I can do about it. I fought with the dentist about the color. It's gonna be a thing until I can actually do cosmetic dentistry, which is just not in the cards for me right now. Someday I would love to change it. I am also sorry that with the caps, I lost a gap that I had between two of my teeth off to the side. It looks weird to me still because it just doesn't look like me speaking, but Again, I'm aware of it. I'm also aware that the colors that I am wearing emphasize the yellowness because they are warmer in tone. And I don't like blue base stuff because it doesn't look good with my complexion usually. It looks a little weird, makes me look sick. Unfortunately, blue base is what you want if you want to accentuate the whiteness of the tooth area. It's a thing. All right. Um, yeah, just be kinder to each other. Sit back and think before you act. And I mean, there, there's there's so much around this topic that I can get into, but again, I keep just boil like I said, I keep boiling it down in my mind to the point is just don't be an asshole, don't be a dick. And I think a lot of us could really use a reminder that look, the world doesn't stop on a dime. So if you've got something going on that doesn't necessarily mean you're doesn't mean you're the special little snowflake. And I'm saying that more to myself than anything else because in particular, I get amped up about certain things and I do behave quite aggressive. So little little insight into me, that's as much a warning for me as anything else. But learn, learn from the lessons and just slow down so that you don't become the child who cries wolf. Because if everything's an emergency and everything is urgent, then nothing is an emergency and nothing is urgent. And that is just the nature of the beast, the way the world works, and how people perceive things. Ha, huh, it's a thing. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I will catch you guys in more. So let's just make up, make up fun. The more I see this, the more I like it. I feel like it's just, so, I feel like it's just glowy and warm and I wasn't necessarily going for full on highlights. So when I did that, I just, it's washed out by the soft box. You see my crow's feet? Let's just, let's just ignore those around that scar there. But uh, just, just keeping it fresh. Keeping the lips soft. I really like the Artist Couture lip, lip gloss. I have a feeling it's gonna get into my fine lines, but that's only because I probably already had lipstick that had gotten into the fine lines and it's just gonna follow the path. And that's okay, but super hydrating. I would recommend it, I like it. Would I purchase more from them? Probably not because I have the colors that I think I like. Ah, eyeshadows. I, I am torn because I really do like their products. I just don't know that I like the price point compared to some other brands that I like just as much. So that's a thing as well. But fabulous palette. I mean, good good job. Like I can't, I can't say anything more than that. It's just a great everyday go-to palette. You can day looks, night looks, work looks, play looks. You're good to go. I'm going to catch you all in the next one.